Today we're taking a look at a machine that, well, now I know this is an unpopular opinion, but I've always kind of disliked. This is my 400 megahertz PowerBook G3 Pismo, and it was the last and greatest of the era of dark plastic PowerBooks. And I've always thought it was basically the worst of two worlds. It was the odd man out among the colorful iBooks, iMacs, and towers and cubes that were its contemporaries, but it had none of the charm of the old world, old style machines. There was no rainbow logo, for example, and it also had giant new style Apple logos that look pretty out of place. And this keyboard color, gross. But the more I looked into this machine and used it, the more I started to realize that, well, I think I might've been wrong. So stay tuned. For a machine with such a short lifespan, announced in February 2000 and discontinued about nine months later, the Pismo sure has a heck of a cult following. And when you compare it to the PowerBooks that came before it and after it, you can start to understand why. The Pismo, as kind of a bridge machine between 90s Apple and the Apple of Steve Jobs' return, shared a lot in common with the beautiful titanium PowerBook G4 that replaced it. They both had a 100 megahertz system bus, they both originally supported 512 megs of RAM, and both can be updated to 1 gig of RAM with more modern PC100 modules. In fact, it's kind of like Steve Jobs could see into the future, saw what laptops were going to look like, and then shoved the guts of this machine into this machine. Now, the tie book certainly looked nicer and had about 20% more screen real estate with this lovely widescreen, but the Pismo had a lot of advantages of its own. The hot swappable bays allowed you to expand your machine with all kinds of cool stuff, DVD, floppy, and there was even an aftermarket Blu-ray drive made by FastMac for the Pismo. The tie book, on the other hand, was stuck with whatever DVD drive you ordered from the factory. You could also run dual batteries with the Pismo, with some aftermarket dual battery combinations providing you with 12 hours or more of runtime. With the tie book, you got up to five hours and you were darn happy about it. Performance was pretty great too. Compared to the Lombard PowerBook that the Pismo replaced, it was about 30% faster, and compared to my favorite G3 PowerBook, the Wall Street right here, the Pismo was more than twice as fast thanks to both the faster processor and the much faster 100 megahertz bus, the Wall Street was stuck with a pokey 50 megahertz system bus. And if you put a G4 upgrade in the Pismo, which were available up to 550 megahertz and extremely easy to install, the hot rotted Pismo's performance would absolutely clobber the first generation tie books. Even better, if you didn't need the G4's Altavec extensions, there were G3 upgrades as fast as one gigahertz for the Pismo. Given all of this, I think I can admit that my dislike for the Pismo was misplaced. I mean, I still think this keyboard looks hideous, but at least it feels nice to type on. And these swoopy plastic palm rests look dated, but they are an undeniably comfortable place to rest your palms. And with a few quick upgrades, an MSATA SSD and maxed out RAM, this machine might just be the perfect portable G3. So let's take care of that stuff right now. Now the Pismo, like other power books of this era, was extremely easy to open and upgrade and the keyboard just tabs right off. And we don't have an airport card, so we just have to remove this heat sink here. And then they even put a handy plastic pull tab right here to pull the entire processor and memory module straight up. And then the hard drive is similar. It's just connected with a little tab here and it has its own little plastic pull tab to lift the cage assembly straight out. 
And I've got a little anti-static pad here just in case. And we're going to be using a Dogfish Media 120 gigabyte M SATA in our famous little enclosure that we use for pretty much all of these. And this just takes M SATA and adapts it to 3.5 inch IDE. And then we'll just stick it in the adapter here in place of the original 10 gig drive. And while we're in here, I'm gonna replace the memory on the processor daughter card with one gig of PC-133, which will run at PC-100 in this machine. And one thing that's interesting is the module on top can be a regular size module, but the module on the bottom needs to be a short module to make sure that the RAM chips don't actually touch some of this other stuff down here. So I've cleaned off the old thermal compound here and now I'm gonna do the most dangerous thing to do on YouTube. I'm gonna put new thermal compound on here and I fully expect to hear from everybody below that I put either way too much or way too little. Actually, that was a little bit too much. And now we can use one of the generous two FireWire ports in the back of this thing to plug in my FireWire SSD, which has a whole bunch of partitions with different installers on it. So let's see what we got. Chime, that's good. So actually for some reason it's not saying quite all of my installers because I do have like 922 and 8.6 on here but we might as well just install Tiger since that's basically what this machine was born to do. And we'll just open disk utility and make sure we can see our drive. And there it is. Oh, 60 gigabyte dogfish SSD. I thought it was 120, but hey, 60 is pretty good. And we'll just partition this. Call it Pismo with a Z because that's cool. All right, let's install. Okay, so that installed very easily, quickly, with no fuss and no drama, no weird fans going crazy, which I think must be a first for this channel. And we now have Mac OS X Tiger. And if we check about this Mac, we can see 10.4 with our 400 megahertz G3 and one gig of RAM. And we might as well let it run its updates, which it still really impresses me that you can connect this ancient laptop to the internet and connect to Apple servers and download the updates for this extremely out of date operating system. So there we go. I think this is just about a perfect Pismo now. And we are reading all of the partitions from the SSD Firewire drive. So that's good. And as far as what's next for this machine, well, originally I was kind of torn whether I should find like a G4 
500 550 card for it or maybe try to find the g3 900 but actually i literally just today found a g4 500 card so that should get here in a couple of days and i'm very excited to put that into this machine and i'd also like to get a rebuilt battery for this and actually try the dual battery situation because then i could maybe even take this thing out into the world and sit around in Star Starbucks like a crazy hipster with this ancient laptop, which is going to be quite fast with the G4. But of course, I'm curious what you think. What upgrades would you do to this machine to make it the perfect ultimate PowerBook G3, well, G4 Pismo? So let me know in the comments below. But for now, that'll do it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more Macintosh shenanigans like this, please subscribe down below and I'll see you next time. And a special thanks to Sorta Eclectic, Chris and Spike, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping make this video possible.